Okay. So problem 5.35 reads, a circular loop of wire with radius R relies on the XY plane centered at the origin. And carries a current I running clock counterclockwise as viewed from the positive Z axis. Okay, so let's try to draw that example. Okay, so for example, this Okay, so this is your Z, and this is your XY plane, and this is your loop of wire. Okay. So this is your loop of wire, and then, sorry. Let's make it red. And then let's say this is your um, y, x, and z. Okay, and then looking from the positive z axis, so what does it mean? So if this is where you're looking at, the direction of the current here is uh, counterclockwise, okay? So in this direction. So this is your current. Okay. Now, by right hand rule, because the current is flowing in this direction, therefore the magnetic dipole moment would be pointed along the positive Z axis. This is now your magnetic dipole moment. Okay? Okay, we'll make this Okay. Uh, so M here would be uh, M, sorry, M along the Z direction. How do I know that? Okay, mathematically, we know that by definition, M is equal to I a vector where a is the area vector okay the direction of the area vector will depend on the direction of i so by right hand rule if this is your i in this in the xy plane therefore a vector or a a hat or n hat for normal or the direction is normal to this plane is along the positive z direction so this is now equal to i times A. And what is A? That's the area of this loop. If R is the radius of the loop, therefore this is pi R squared. And then the direction is Z hat direction. That's why M, as I mentioned here, is pointing along the Z direction. So the answer here is pi R squared I Z. So this is your uh, magnetic moment, uh, magnetic dipole moment. Okay. Now letter B. What's the approximate magnetic field at points far from the origin? So the keyword here is points far from the origin. So that means we're going to use the multiple expansion for magnetic fields. And because there is no magnetic monopole, so the first term for the multiple expansion for this magnetic field will be the magnetic field dipole. Okay? So therefore, the magnetic field, dipole component of the magnetic field 
would be approximately equal to, okay, so remember that this is now equal to what? This is equal to mu naught. You're going to see your lecture notes that I uploaded. That's mu naught over 4 pi times the uh, magnetic dipole divided by r squared, uh, r cubed. E times 2 cosine theta r hat plus sine theta theta hat. Okay, so this is now equal to u naught u naught so m the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment is pi r squared i. So i will cancel with this pi. So this is mu naught i r squared over 4 r cubed times 2 cosine theta r hat plus sine theta theta hat. This is now the uh, magnetic field of a dipole. Of course, the higher order dipole, uh, higher order terms, quadrupole, etc., would be neglected because of the increased R. So we're looking for points far away from the point. Okay. And then lastly, letter C. Show that, uh, show that for points on the z-axis, your answer is consistent with the exact field as in equation 5.6 when r is greater than r. So what is ex example 5.6? Example 5.6. Let me go back to our book. I'm looking at the book right now. So what example 5.6 here? Okay, so from example 5.6, the magnetic field of the ring would be equal to the magnitude will be along the z direction and this is equal to b naught i over 2 times uh, r squared over r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. Okay, so as mentioned here, show that for points on the z-axis, so that means for points on the z-axis, theta would be equal to 0. And then we can change variables where r becomes z and r hat becomes z hat. Okay, if that is the case, we can see here that sine 0 becomes 0. This becomes 1. And then this becomes z hat. And this becomes z. So the overall b cannot be represented as u naught i r squared times 2 z hat divided by 4 r cube or z cube. Okay. Which will be equal to mu naught i r squared 
over 2z cube z hat. Now well, let's see if this is consistent with the result in equation 5.6. Now looking here, we note that z is greater than r. So if z is much greater than r, this term will be reduced to z squared. So this becomes b equals u naught i over 2 times r squared over, so this is z squared to the 3 halves, and this is z cubed. So you will notice that this and this are the same. Okay, so here we were able to show that for points on the z-axis, the answer here, the answer here is consistent to our answer here for this condition. Okay.